So, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me above the noise of both church bells on a Sunday and car noise. This is the gate of uh, Chinatown in Newcastle. As you know, when the Chinese community feel at home in a place, they erect a gate. It's rather beautiful. Stop and pause on it for a while. But, not only that, if you look down a bit, that sort of iron and steel structure, that is another holy place in Newcastle. That is the football ground, St James's Park, literally in the middle of the city. You don't see very much these days, because most of them are now new stadiums are built out of town. That is the famous Gallagate End. See that sign. You know, you literally, you walk under the arch and there's the football ground, which I never would have imagined for one moment. One of the splendid Chinese lions guarding the entrance to the gate. Oh, that's been blown away. Under the uh, under the gate and straight over to the football ground, which holds 55,000 people, I think. There's some modern Newcastle. I assume there are hotels and offices and apartments rather than, I don't know what else they'd be. City Gate East. So this, I guess, is possibly the business centre of Newcastle. I'm not going to go up all the way to the ground, so there's not a game here this weekend. So, here is the grey monument. Oh, I can't even get it in. This is a Trafalgar Nelson's Column size of monument. In the middle of Newcastle, there's a covered market. Not covered, there's a market there. And I'm going to get a close up because it's really interesting what the inscription is. See this. After a century of civil peace, the people renew their gratitude to the author of the Great Reform Bill, 1932. So that's Lord Grey, who's a Whiggish Prime Minister, I assume, from this area. But I don't know. The 1832 Great Reform Act was actually, uh, in a way, limited the extension of franchise, despite all the grassroots pressure for it. So it's actually sort of a Conservative bill kept the aristocracy in place in, in the ruling classes. But also it's interesting it says a century of civil peace because there certainly wasn't international peace. Britain was fighting so many wars with the French mainly. So and the Dutch. So uh slightly uh, one sided I feel. So this is the uh, Christmas market. Every stall is Christmassy. What are we not even out in November yet? French biscuits, I wonder how their trade will fare in a post Brexit world. It's 11 o'clock. Is that too early for a fajita? Look at the size of those drums. Russian dogs. Matryoshkas. That's what I like it for breakfast. Pond on fences. Look at that, don't see that very often. Gramophone records. Oh, the splendid music shop. Wow, it's a, it's a whole length of this arcade. Instruments, printed music, keyboards in the background. Wow, yeah. rather beautiful. I don't know what style that is, if it's Art Deco. But there, is, there is a bit of the Art Deco I spotted in Newcastle. It's undergoing heavy renewal and not restoration but uh, modernisation I suppose. There's also a lot of this, a lot of units up for sale. Yorkshire pudding wraps. Wow, I remember seeing the Yorkshire pudding was a sort of pastry wrap in itself but wrapped in something else. My goodness. Oh, unless they mean something inside Yorkshire pudding I suppose. So, showing you this, it's a railroad bridge of some sort, straight by the signals up there. But this is what I love about oldness. 
Look at the angles of all the buildings under the bridge, through the bridge, that one up hard, hard by the side of it. You know, this is not American grid city with no character at all. Apologies to Americans. This is, I don't know what this is. Just make and do and just fit things in into spaces no matter. Or is there a cunning plan behind it? You know, no straight roads here. And that, my friends, is the view of Newcastle that I think everyone associates with it, Tyne Bridge. And I'm down at the quayside. We're about to be down at the quayside. And I'm really looking forward to exploring all the bridges because that's about 30 bridges over the Thames, although that includes places outside of London. And very few of them have character, obviously Tower Bridge does. But the thing about these Newcastle Tyne bridges is they are absolutely industrial bridges. They are all steel. You know, some of London's are stone and all that sort of stuff. There's another one up there. But these Newcastle ones, I don't know, they have some have much more character to me. right under it, which may not be the best view for it. Look at that, I mean, that's just amazing. So that is the Millennium Bridge, which we have one like that in London over the Thames, sort of erected for 2000 or the Queen's Jubilee or whatever. It's rather pointless footbridges, I think. I don't know if that's a footbridge. Of course, our engineering in the 21st century is not what it was in the Victorian age and in London, and that bridge had to be closed after opening because it wobbled in the wind. It took a long time to sort that out. And I believe that's the Gateshead Bridge, so that beyond there, which I'm not going to walk terribly far, is Gateshead, which I guess is a different urban part of Newcastle. I always thought it was more Sunderland, but my geography of this area is not great. I mean, never visited here before. Yeah, while we're here, why not? Shot of the Tyne River. Gateway to the north. The view of the Tyne Bridge. I assume that's possibly High Bridge. And a beautiful bridge as well. Four. So all these stalls here, apart from reminding me a bit of Paris by the Seine, also show, I mean, I've seen nothing but sort of market stalls in my tour this morning. Newcastle's obviously a, a trading merchant town. <laughs> Incredible number of stalls, and that doesn't obviously include all the shopping arcades and stuff like that. Okay, coming to the food section now, it appears, oh, that smells good. Slightly too early for me. <laughs> I'm just going to walk to the Millennial Bridge. Don't think I'm going to cross it. Assuming you can cross it on foot. And that will be the end of my tour of Newcastle, which I've greatly enjoyed. My first time in the city, and I would love to come back. Bookstall, you'll excuse me. Peter James, 13 million copies sold, and this one possibly to be resold. Why not vote leave? Book I won't be buying. Wow, that looks really old. Done this room, got possibly a bit too mainstream for my tastes. Millennial Bridge. Crappy electric guitar busker soundtrack. 
Obviously, you can walk across it, but... Oh, it's the Baltic... OK, the Baltic Centre is over there, which is a modern development in Newcastle. I probably won't go and see it. But that's what's on the other side. And Baltic wind is beginning to bite in. It's starting to get a bit cold, actually. Is that a seagull on that lamppost? OK, so I said back there, was that a seagull on the uh, lamppost? No, it's a kitty wave. Tyneside Special Seabirds. The kitty wakes that nest on the Tyne Bridge are a special and unique attraction to Newcastle, being the most inland breeding colony of these seabirds anywhere in the world. So there you go. Watch a close up. Quite cute for a bird. And I'm right under the Tyne Bridge now. Look at that steel that's gone into that construction of the supporting arch. It's stunning. And then the... Well, I wish I knew what these architectural terms were. I want to say balustrade, but that's completely wrong. So whatever that is. A free bridge view over the time. Is it four? Four bridge view. So there's that red bridge, blue bridge behind it, the high bridge and the time bridge in the front. Amazing. Four bridges in very close span.